Okay, I'm going to start off this video by showing how the pros do it, and none better than Dan Weary's group in the Animal Welfare Program at University of British Columbia, and here's another paper from them, um, and this time it's a behaviour paper, and that behaviour work uh, is typical for presenting non-parametric statistics over parametric statistics. We use the Mann-Whitney test instead of a t-test, where we think that the median is a better fit than the mean. Perhaps extreme values would have more of a um, an influence on the mean than it would on the median value. Also, in behaviour studies, we often have small sample sizes, and that also means the Mann-Whitney test and the other non-parametric tests are more suitable. And if we had ordinal data that ranked data, say first, second, and third, or on a scale like a Likert scale, um, then the non-parametric statistics are your only option. Anyway, first I just want to have a look at the single paper from 2016. And we're just going to scroll down. It's just comparing two groups of cows. And all I want to show you is the, the first box and whisker plot. So here it's quite nicely laid out. We have clear axis labels. We have um, everything is very clear here. And notice we have two plots, A and B, both within the single figure title. We have these boxes show a median across here, and then the upper and lower quartile. And then we have these whiskers, and the whiskers up and down can mean different things. In GenStat, what I'll show you later, they will be the 5th and 95th confidence intervals. But on the here, it says that the, uh, the whiskers are indicated by one and a half times the interquartile range. Notice how complete the title is here. On figure one, it's, got, it's not just a very short title. It talks about the latency in hours. It gives you all the different treatment groups. It gives you the N values for each treatment. It tells you exactly what the box and whisker plot is demonstrating, and that's best practice. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the box plot and also how to present a good table. So down here, we also have a very good table. So table two, again, it has a very complete title with all the information. And here, we're presenting median values here, where you might compare the median of the non-experienced with the median of the experienced group. And here's a p-value to support that uh, the null hypothesis. And in the brackets here, we have the lower and upper quartile. And that's where I'm going to start on this video. So here we have some typical non-parametric data for a Mann-Whitney test. We have counted data, the investigation of bold numbers in fields at two different sites of potential barn owl release. Counted data tends to not be on a normal distribution, and therefore non-parametric statistics are very appropriate. Additionally, something like a behaviour experiment where you've got two sets of data and you're looking at the percentage of observed scans from perhaps some 5, 10, 15 minute interval scans on instantaneous scan sampling regime also lends itself to this approach. So we go back to this first set because this is what we have in the exercise. We have two sets of data, A and B, and we simply want to do some descriptive statistics. We're going to produce a box plot and have a look at making a table. So the descriptive statistics we'd need for that table would be the medians. And the median in Excel is simply equals for the function median, open brackets, select our data without the header, close brackets, enter. And 27.5 is halfway between the 26 and 29, so that makes it uh, the middle value. We also want the lower quartile. Just make that column a bit wider. And that is equals quartile open brackets, and then it says array quart, the array is the data set, and quart is which quartile we want, and we want quartile number one. For the lower quartile, and for the upper quartile, which is our other statistic we want for that table, same again, equals quartile brackets, and this time we want quartile number three. So not the median, but the third quartile, number three. And that gives our data for the table. And the wonders of Excel means I can just select those data, and I can do that, drag it across with the relative references. Let me just check that. 
to expand the box to make that bigger. Click in the in the brackets, expand the box to cover the right data set. Again, expand the box to make the right data set. And there we have it. There's our data for our table. Now while Excel does graphs very well, the one that it doesn't do very well is the box plot. You can do them, you can find some hacks online on how to do them, but actually they're much easier to do in GenStat. So I'm going to take the data in the normal way, I'm going to copy it from top to bottom like this, including the single row heading. I'm going to right click copy, then I'm going to go to GenStat. This is the 19th edition, and as always, spread new from clipboard. Press OK, and there's our data set waiting for us here. So we'll do the analysis in a moment, but here, just to first, we want to present a box plot. So that's from the graphics menu, graphics, box plot. And now I've got different ways of arranging the data. Here we've got very straightforward two columns. So I'm going to put in site A and site B. In the options, you can do this later if you double click the graph, but in the options, I don't want to put the graph in a box. Of course, you don't want a graph title at the top because you put that in in Word later. And here, this is an important one that gets missed. You want the box and whisker plot because it's much more straightforward to interpret in my way of thinking and it makes the title easier as well. So you can put that there. Here in the axis, we can put our titles here. Um, we'll do that later. But here in the lower bound, you want to have the axis starting at zero as always. Put all that together, press run, and we have the box plot. Okay, to edit this box plot, we're going to double click it, and it comes up in a sort of yellowish color. And then we have our options. I'm just going to move that off to the side so we can see what we're doing. Here I've got five options layout, key, x axis, and y axis, and graph options. While we're on graph options, this is something that's interesting. Um, that we've not done before, we can change the colour of our boxes. So here, if instead of a line, first I have to select the data set, and this is slightly complicated, you have to go with me with this one. We want box one and box two to change the colour. So box one here, change the method from line to fill, we change the colour from here to Let's make it nice light blue. I can go for other colours if I wanted to, but I'm just going to go with these default ones. So I'm going to go nice light blue, press apply, and there you can see I've changed the colour of my box plot. If we go back to here, I can change box two, the second box. At the moment, I want to, it's a line, I want to change that to a fill. I'm going to change that colour. Let's make it pink. Apply that. And there we have two coloured box plots. What else are we missing? Well, we're missing. A label here, so we're going to go to the y axis here, and that was full count. So I'm going to write that in there. I can actually play with the title font here based on our standards. Now, Arial is probably what I'm using, I might want to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go to Arial 10, okay, and I might want to play with some of the other font sizes as well later on. Notice that the, um, the site A site underscore a and the site underscore b that's come from whatever i called the column name in genstat to begin with so if you want to play with those that's the place to do it I press ok now i have my full count label i have that there there's my graphs ready to go i can uh, save and close and that's ready for me to copy and paste it into word So here is the graph in Word. Of course, we call it a figure, and here's a nice title. I have the title that shows what it is, and I also tell people exactly what's on the box plot. The box plot shows the medians, the quartiles, and the 5th and 95th percentiles, because I chose the box and whisker option rather than the schematic plot. <coughs> OK, so I've got an axis label here got some access labels there, I can play with the font size to make it tidy up, but it's all there apart from one important thing. I don't have a measure of confidence in this potential difference between the two data sets. What I want is a p-value. Therefore we need to go to GenStat. Again, remember we have our data is still there in GenStat, and I'm going to run 
a man Whitney test. All these stats are in the stats menu at the top. So we go stats, statistical tests, and this is one of our two sample non-parametric tests. If I click here, this is where you find the man Whitney test, and you'll also find the Wilcoxon test in there as well, and also Spearman's rank if that happens to be your thing. So we're going to put in site A, I'm going to double click that, and it's there, the cursor's moved down, so I'm going to double click site B. I like clicking the options and looking at the ranks particularly as well. It's nice to look at, back at those potentially in the analysis. So I'm going to run that. And here is my one man with the U test, also known as a Wilcoxon rank sum test. Notice that's different from the Wilcoxon pair test that you've learned in class. So here, with the variance site A and site B, the value of U was 23.5. And the first sample, as in site A, has the higher rank sum. Okay. The exact probability under the null hypothesis that site A is equal to site B is very small. It's 0.014 or 1.4%, which means they're not very confident. It beats our 0.05% for significance, therefore this significant result. This exact probability here is our p-value. So we're going to take the p-value. From here, I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go to Word and I think I'll insert a text box, just a standard text box here, simple text box. Don't know why it puts it down there. And I'm just simply going to replace all that nonsense with this value here P equals. Notice it's an exact probability. You could put less than 0.05 if you preferred it. But now I'm going to put the exact probability in here. I'm going to put that somewhere sensible. Perhaps I could make the font slightly larger. Bom, bom, bom. And also, I'd want to right click, format the shape. And then what I don't want a line around that box. Close. Now, apart from a bit of tidying up of font sizes, and perhaps cropping the bottom of the graph to make the title a bit closer, we're good to go. So I promised you a table earlier, and here it is. I've started it off in Excel, and I find it a bit easier here to work with the cells, and then to copy it into Word later on. So I have the table title with the ball count. I say that there's medians and quartiles in there, and that's what we have, the median and the lower and upper quartiles in the brackets. So the 27.5 from there, is that 27.5 there. That lower quartile 24.25, I've rounded it up to make it 24.3. 34, well I've made it 34.0 to have a consistent number of decimal places here. And the same for these ones here. Put that there. We need to add our p-value now. So the p-value was 0.014 from the analysis. And then I simply take all that and I'm going to right click, copy, I'm going to take it to Word, I'm going to right click and paste it there, and there's my table. Um, I could do with perhaps just extending it slightly to make that title all the way across here. Now as you'll recognize, um, the table is unlikely to be used if you've just got one piece of data. So if I was going to have a second piece of data, I'd right click, I'd insert a row below that one for another set of data and I might do it again, insert another row below that one so this might be variable 2 and this might be variable 3 if such data existed perhaps you have behavior and you have a whole load of behaviors that you want to present on a single table you have that there what you would want then is a line across the top so this tool up here, if we go to here, we go add a top border and we want to add a bottom border and then we simply want a bottom border underneath the table. Notice that there's no other dividing lines in there, certainly no vertical lines on the table. We'll have a look at that. It looks a bit complicated in, in the word as we see it. But if we go to the print preview, you see it looks really nice and tidy. And there you have it, a graph and a table for the Man Whitney U test.